Hello, my name is Zaydeen and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing how to use the mini jelly plate. If you've never used these small jelly plates that come in a lot of different kind of sizes and shapes, they're really fun to add to your creative practice. I've been using them for the last week and I've been finding some really fun things that I wanted to share with you today on how I've started incorporating these little plates into my artistic practice. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about in this video is the size of jelly plates we'll be using today. I wanted to show you a comparison. This is a 5 by 7 jelly plate that I've used before in projects and the ones that we'll be using today are 3 inches by 2 inches, approximately 3 by 3, and again 3 by 2. They're quite a bit smaller so you can use them in a little bit of a different way than you would use a traditional jelly plate. I have the card above as well in the description below a couple of my other jelly plate videos and how I use printing but usually generally when you do print on a jelly plate, you add the paint, you add the print on top, and then you pull it. With these ones, you can do a little bit of a different technique with how you can use these in your journal pages and in your projects. So what's really nice about these jelly plates is you can basically add them to a stamp pad and turn them into a really small stamp that you can use to make jelly print patterns on your pages for. So I'm just going to show you a few little techniques that are similar to ones I've also shown before about how to use these on your projects. And so in this case, I'm just going to start with adding a little bit of paint to the surface. And I'm just going to take one of my little fun tools and just add some squiggly lines in there. And what you do is you take your piece of paper and you can add your pattern. And because that one was actually a fairly thin layer of paint, I can basically just add a little bit more paint onto the surface, add some more squiggly patterns, and add another print. It's a great simple way of adding images to your paper in ways that you can have patterns. Because what's nice about this too is now we can start looking at adding additional layers. So let's say I really enjoyed that, but I want a little bit more interest in this particular background. So I'm going to choose a slightly different color. I'm going to use something maybe maybe a little bit darker. Let's try to go for contrasting. And I'm going to try to use something that has fairly large holes so that you can actually see the variation from print to print. The idea with this is you want to try to go very light with your paint if possible. I tend to go a bit heavier, but I'm working on it to try to like not get really um, heavy prints because then you end up losing a lot of the detail. So a bubble stencil like this is a really great choice for trying to add a little bit of detail as your second print. And so you can see it has some lighter spots, some darker spots. I'm just going to go over one of those prints I already have and again you can easily line these up because again it's on a stamp pad, you're not having to guess. There you go, you have a little bit of that blue still underneath, but then you have the, the darker blue on top. And that's how you can start adding layers and more texture to your existing prints. So another thing you can do with this is stamp these with a stencil still attached to the surface if you want something really bold. So in this case, I'm going to take that same circular stencil. I'm going to make sure it's staying nice and strong on my surface there. I'm going to actually leave it on, flip it over onto my page, and press down. And there you can see you end up getting a very strong image. All those white spots are fully white. But then your next print can be really quite interesting. And then actually with this one, there's enough paint on there that I should be able to get a halfway decent third print. Yeah. And so now this is a way you can start using those second and third values and adding a little bit more texture. And you can see with these ones, these look almost more dimensional because you have some of those white spots showing through. And so you don't necessarily have to do these all on the same page. You can change whether or not you want these all on the same page. You can do the first print maybe somewhere else because you like the second and third print. There's a lot of different ways you can go about this that's going to give you that texture and that variation that you're looking for on your project. So now I'm going to go and try something else here. I'm going to start with a really yellow, light yellow. 
and that was way, way, way too much paint. So what I'm going to try to do here is actually use my brayer to remove most of it off. Yeah, so I made a bit of a mess there. It's sometimes really hard to control. I'm trying to decide if maybe I want to use another jelly plate to just uh, actually manage my paint on and then use it to transfer some of it to this one just so that I can try to control the paint a little bit more. I have only gotten these plates like a week ago, so I haven't played with them that much. In this case, I'm just doing some stronger lines. I'm gonna stamp this a few times. Again, the more paint you have on there, the less detail you're gonna get. And that third print is very quite light, but I like it. So what I'm gonna do with this next print is focus on one area of a image that I would like to have on my jelly plate and I will add it on top of these ones. I'm gonna try not to go too, too dark, but I do want it contrasting. So why don't we try some red? And if you've been following some of my other jelly printing videos, you'll know that I generally use Pabio paints for most of my jelly printing. I particularly like the Pabio paints because they do have pigment in them, so it's great when I wanna add these into some of my canvas work because I know they're going to be light fast. It also works really nice, it's very smooth, and works really well for this type of work. So I like those keys, so I'm going to try to add those keys into my image. I'm gonna just use my bigger brayer just to make sure that it has a nice, strong image. I'm gonna pull that up so you can see there's a very good image there. And now I'm gonna add it actually to the lightest one. I'm actually gonna to have to add this at an angle because I actually printed this at an angle, which I wasn't I wasn't really thinking about that when I was putting down my stencil. But there you can get some of the colors underneath. So again, you can get a very different look by doing, again, the two prints. Again, because that one had very little paint as it was, some of that yellow gets to come through, and that's more of a more solid print. This one, I really liked what was already going on in the background, so then I added in a little bit of the red on top, adds a little bit more interest. The other thing you can do is add your paint and then add a stamped image. And this is what's really great about these little ones, is because of the fact that you can have parts of images you can make fun little patterns and you can add these as individual blocks that you could either cut out or just make part of your artwork for that piece what I like about this is you can get a lot of different techniques and different feel from these smaller blocks than you can from the larger jelly plates. So one of my favorite things to do with these small jelly plates is to paint on them. When I've been doing this on my larger jelly plates, what I find is I often can't paint fast enough for them not to dry out on my plate while I'm working. Also, I find I end up using a lot of extenders and other things to try to make these the prints work, and it kind of, it's kind of hit and miss. So what I've been really enjoying about these small jelly plates is that you can paint on them a little bit, and play around with it and kind of see what you can kind of come up with. And you don't have to worry about adding extenders or anything because they're a very small surface. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of paint to my surface. And today I'm just gonna show you more doodly type techniques, nothing quite as serious. I've been playing around with actually doing landscapes and flowers and everything on uh, the larger jelly plates. And at some point, uh, I may do that as a video here if anyone's interested in seeing that. But for today, I'm just going to just add a little bit of paint to my my mat. I'm going to grab one of my paintbrushes and start adding a little bit of paint to my surface. And so one that I've been enjoying doing is using my round brush to make little marks. And you can make them very random, you can make them into a pattern. And this is super easy to do, just three marks with your paintbrush. I 
and you can vary if you just wanted to kind of resist the jelly plate and basically have no paint or if you want a really strong paint spot there it really is up to you and kind of whatever you want in that particular design Just add those on, find a clean piece of paper, and there's your print. So you can see where I had too much paint, and then I had other areas that were a little bit more globby. That's okay. That's part of this, is learning how to control how much paint that you have on your surface. And I'm just going to just clean off my plate by just doing another print. Which that one's pretty interesting too, even though it was kind of just cleaning my plate. I'm going to add a little bit more of the gold. And if you actually have too much paint on your brayer from other stuff, you can always have a piece that you just roll it across just to get rid of that extra paint so it doesn't give you too many mixed colors in your next print and on your brayer. So I'm going to go a bit thicker with this. That was a bit too thick, but I will work with it. So I'm going to try this again. In this case, I'm going to start by doing little, little flowers. And depending on how hard you press is what kind of shape you get for your leaf and how big your flower gets. And again, by using a larger round paintbrush or a smaller round paintbrush, you can get very different looks for this. So I have a fair amount of paint on here, so my first print may not be great. And that's sometimes the thing is it, it takes a little bit of playing around to figure out how much paint you want. How I can tell is that you see all this texture here that it shows that there's a lot of paint on the surface. And that mean, that's why I know I may have a bit of trouble getting a really good print. And I'm okay with that. A lot of this is experimentation and that's something I really want to focus on today is experiment, try. It's not every print is gonna be perfect. I often find that you'll see people do videos and there's nothing wrong with that because everyone wants to show themselves in a good light. I do all the time, <laughs> but sometimes it can be hard when you're learning to see people make perfect prints and you're sitting here going, well, mine look nothing like that. Well, how in the world am I going to go about this? And so I guess my hope is by showing you some of the, the good, bad, and the ugly of, of jelly printing where I sometimes get really great prints. I sometimes don't get really great prints. And I'll just use them in different places so that it doesn't really matter whether or not I get a great print or not. It can be a background of something else. And it doesn't, perfection isn't really important with this. The importance is just trying to find something that you enjoy and something that makes you feel inspired. So we've got that piece of paper again. And I'm just going to take another print. So it went a little bit smudgy. And let's take a second one. So that's looking a little bit better. And so you can see by the areas where I had a lot of paint versus not a lot of paint, that's where you sometimes get those blotches. So a lot of it's trying to control how much paint you have on the surface, which takes time. It's just a practice thing. And I don't mind that there's a few little blue spots showing up. And this is where you can just have fun. You can do little zigzags. If you have too much paint, you can always just pull it off a little bit. I'm also fine with letting the gold below kind of mix with the blue. And you can see there, you generally get a better print because there was a lot more even amount of paint on the, the, the jelly plate. 
there you go. So you can see that just by doing a bunch of different mark makes with your paintbrushes, this doesn't have to be your work of art. It can just be fun little doodles, trying different shapes with your paintbrush. You can get some really fun effects. So I just want to show you a different way. You can maybe just add a little bit more pattern to these little jelly plates because I like the idea that these are round or square. I think they're really great for being able to provide some sense of, of detail like oh we have a branch or we have a bird. And so with this one I'm going to put the bird right down in the center. And then let's just throw a little bit of the branch in here without covering up the, the bird. And then by stamping that, you end up with something that is really unique. And then what you could do is actually go in with your paint pens or add some extra doodles and add more variation to this particular image. And this is one that would actually do better, doing it a little bit darker. I have a little bit of paint still sitting here on my craft sheet, so I'm just going to put it on. Maybe you just want to have some floral patterns on your little block. So these could be cut out and used as a focal point on some of your other art journal pages or your cards or other things. I love the idea that they're like little, maybe little cameos or little little scenes that you could make with these lovely oval plates. I think there's a lot of different ways you can use these little jelly plates. Them being so small, you can use your stamps, you can use parts of your stencils, you can make them little images that you can add on to other projects. There are ones that you could actually create their own full background from. When I was playing around with this technique, I actually just took a piece of watercolor paper that already had some paint on it, and then just started playing around with adding different doodles and different shapes and patterns in my book. This isn't done yet. This is just one more layer. But just to show you that by just adding them as little layers, adding them as little patterns or little pictures on your regular journal pages, it can go a long way for creating a really interesting design. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today and maybe learned something new about printing with mini jelly plates. Again, it's a little bit different than using a conventional size jelly plate and I think there's a lot of potential there for how we can use this in our creative practice. If you have enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, if you have any questions about mini jelly plates or about jelly printing, I would love to answer your questions. Just leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you're interested in seeing the written and photo instructions for this tutorial, they're available on my website along with a lot of other articles and ideas for creative self-care in your own life. If you're looking for the supply list for this project, you can find it below or on my website. I hope you have a really great week, that you take time for some creative self-care, and I will see you next time.